Hello everybody. Welcome to Morgan EMS College Remote Learning Hub. I am Muhammad Kurshad Alam, Head Department of English. Today I will convey a chapter by chapter critical commentary of Silas Burns by George Eliot. Today is the second segment covering chapter 7 to 15. The objectives of this lesson is to provide a clear conceptions on plot development and other literary skills. Chapter 7 depicts a turning point in the life of Silas. He appears like the ghost and the villagers are shocked. Silas has only wanted the gold and now he discovers the warmth of the village community as they listen to his story. In Chapter 8, the weakness of Godfrey's characters are highlighted. Godfrey's weak willpower is emphasized by his rehearsal of what he will tell his father. He decides to rely on luck to extricate him. Chapter 9 gives us further information on a square cast. His attitude towards his son suggests he is not quite the caring, concerned father we might have expected. He is happy to let them carry on without any real discipline until he feels they are actually hurting him. In chapter 10, the villagers' changed attitude to Silas continues. They now regard him as crazy and needing help and sympathy. They encourage him to come to church, which, like the rainbow, is an important focus of community life. Chapter 11 reveals the individual personalities and attitudes of the higher social group in the village. The descriptions of the preparations for and the events of the party keep much detailed information on the period such as of travel, of fashion, of social position in town and country, of a country festival. In chapter 12, George Eliot makes use of coincidences. Molly collapses outside Silas's cottage, the door is open for the New Year's bell, and Silas has a fit. The child is able to walk into the cottage as precisely as the moment that Silas has a cataleptic fit. Years before, Silas had loved and cared for his small sister. Since leaving Lantern Year, he has cared for no one. Receiving care in his own distress from the villagers, here he is able to comfort and care for the child who is in even greater need. His return to being able to laugh has started. Chapter 13 highlighted the guilty secret of Godfrey Cost. The separate stories of Silas Murner and Godfrey Cost meet when Silas accepts the child and Godfrey rejects her. Godfrey recognizes his duty as a father because he is selfish and weak and he prefers to try to marry Nancy, chooses to disown the child. In chapter 14, Silas finds a lie. Here Silas begins to change because of Ippi. This is an important theme. The religion of Town Chapel is very different from the established church. Silas does not understand Dolly's religion. He agrees to have Ippi Christian and brings her to church because he wants to do everything helpful to her and live by rebel custom. Chapter 15 ends ironically, stating a father's duty does not end with providing money for a child. Here the contest between Silas and Godfrey is highlighted. Here is a genealogical chart of the characters of the novel. This chart shows the ancestry of the characters and their relationship with each other. This is important for the deeper study of the social status of the characters in the novel. After studying the first part of the novel, we have a fair idea of language and style of George Eliot. Silas Murner is written in such a way that we, the reader, have a constant overview of what is happening. It allows us to enter the person's mind but gives a narrow view of what is going on. For example, in one chapter, we can be watching Silas as he discovers the theft of his, he discovers the theft of his money, and in the next, we can be sitting in the rainbow waiting for him to hearing the awful news. In Silas Mourner, George Eliot used omniscient narrative style. The advantages of omniscient narrative narration is that 
Firstly, we are given an overview of society, enabling us to draw conclusion to by comparison. And secondly, we are able to empathize with different characters who are suffering as we can see through their unpleasantness. Here are a few checkpoints. After following these lessons carefully, you can answer the questions. This is the end of our commentary on Silas Marner, part 1, segment 2. Thank you. See you again.